So everything looks ready almost. Yes. So I hope that the Facebook will work. Last time it didn't work, so but now I hope that we fixed it. So welcome again. Um, this webinar is about Splink 3.0. How to set it, how to prepare it, eat it, cook it, use it. And I will show you the ingredients of the features that we have added. And also then I will show you the steps, how to use these features. And also I will explain you why we have added these features and not other features. Okay, so the Splinks is who doesn't know me and who doesn't know our company. We work for four years already in the market and we help internet voice providers, uh, wireless providers, any company that connect people to online, let's say to internet services. We help to these companies to optimize their processes, their business, and we help them to grow quickly and we write and deliver software for that. At the moment, we have 30 employees. Half of them are software developers. Like let's say that 15, 16 people are just writing the code. Other team members are in support. We have seven support engineers right now and other guys, they do help us with the marketing and sales. Okay, we have started to provide 24 seven support from this month. And uh, I hope that that will help us to increase uh, the level of support that we help that we have currently. Uh, the Splink software is designed as the framework. So we do a lot of customizations for our customers. We work in the different markets. We are very active in Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and all English speaking countries. Also, we work a lot in Spain where I'm currently and uh, so uh, if you will uh, write me any questions on this chat or on the questions and answers just i appreciate that because i'll be able to answer during the presentation during this meeting uh, also if you are new customers and you are not using splinks yet if you write me your current solution that you are currently using and uh, i also appreciate to understand that uh, to know that there are some people who don't use our platform yet because I think that mainly today we'll have our customers who are waiting for changes and who would like to know what we did what we bring but as I'm saying if there is a someone who is not using Splinks yet please feel free to write your existing solution and to ask me questions about the platform okay because this presentation is more about the new set of features new things that we have added and, and I will explain how these things will help you to grow quickly and to beat competitors and to fight with the large operators in your market. Okay, so let's start. The first that we have is the ingredients. Yeah, this is the ingredients that we are going to use, but it will not be butter and sugar for our cooking, but it will be the parts of the platform. The parts of the platform that we were changing and improving in this version during half a year almost was the CRM. We were touching the CRM. We are preparing the CRM for the 3.1 version where we will add the voice over IP support directly and the email support directly to the CRM to the leads. Currently, we have split it even in the previous version, we have split the uh, uh, CRM leads from customers, but this is uh, we are continuously improving that and I will show you that we have added the sign up form that you can use immediately right now on your website and you just put it with one click and you will get the customers will be able to sign up on your website and you will the leads will be created and splinks immediately. Uh, we have added the scheduling and mobile app for scheduling because when the customer signs up and you have a lead and you need to connect him, you need to plan the work of connection, okay? You need to plan your work of your team 
And uh, this is what we call scheduling, and this is where we put a lot of efforts in this area during this version. And we have created the mobile app that I will show you today for installers and the engineers. So the mobile app to the people who install the connections, who repair the connections, who work on the field. So they will have a mobile app. They can make photo of uh, installments. They can just manage their work, write the comments, track the time. All the things is in the mobile app. Then we have a ticketing. So when customer is connected and he is getting the service, he needs to get a super cool, really good support. To get this support, we use in our company, we use in our company ticketing, and we improve this ticketing a lot on a daily basis. Okay, we have added new reports on that tickets, and I will show you how we work with tickets, because as I'm saying, currently we have seven support members, and uh, there are two sales engineers who are also working in support. So we, we have almost like nine people who are working now with, uh, with the tickets. And uh, we are organizing the tickets, we are tracking, and we are continuously trying to improve it. Okay, we are analyzing, we are setting marks for the tickets. I will show you that as well. So these are the new things that we have added in the ticketing. When your customer is connected, when he is super happy, when he got the tickets and everything in one place in the portal, uh, you issue him the invoices and you charge him for the service. Okay, when you do that, uh, as you know, Splinks has a very powerful recurring and prepaid uh, billing engine. We have plenty of connectors to different payment systems, and we have added two connectors to accounting platform. So we spend a lot of time to design the accounting integration correctly so it, it can work and it will work uh, on a solid level. And this is what we did. Now the integration with Zero and integration with Sage One. I will explain you in details what do I mean by integration, how this integration will work, what is pushed where. And also I will show you the example. I connected the testing account on zero. And for us, it doesn't matter if we connect to zero, if we connect to Sage One, if we connect to the Spanish company called Holdit, also accounting platform, or if we will connect to QuickBooks in the future. Uh, the logic every is the same. So the design of the platform itself for accounting integration is same for all accounting platforms. And let's say in our today dish that we prepared today lunch, we will finish with something what I call like here in Spain, we call it postre. It's something that comes after your main dish, main food. It's like a, uh, ice cream, for example, and that will be IPv6. We have added the native support of IPv6. I wanted to have a presentation in uh, Mikriti conference in March in Prague about IPv6 deployment in the real life and the real network with Mikriti equipment. Unfortunately, the conference was canceled because of the virus. And, uh, but I will do the videos and I will do the detailed explanation how this IPv6 is possible to deploy in the uh, real network of small or medium sized internet provider who uses mainly Mikriti routers. And this is, let's say, 95, 98% of our customers currently. Let's go. So I will explain you the tools and I will show you now one by one, I'll show you the steps, how to do the things in Splinks in the new version. And I recommend you to do the same, the same things that uh, what I will be explaining. If you will need assistance, of course, please feel free to write us to support at splinks.com and my support engineers and I will during this month and during April, we'll be deploying version 3.0 to all our customers and we will be helping with setting up CRM stuff. We'll be helping out with the ticketing, with the scheduling, and also we'll be gathering feedbacks from you because the version, the mobile version of app for scheduling is quite new. So it can miss something, something cannot be there. So for example, you are looking for some feature and it's not there, we appreciate any feedback on all the features, okay? So let's cook, let's start, and we'll start with the first ingredient, which is the CRM. So I will quickly show you how we design the CRM. I will explain what will be the next steps in that CRM, but now you can use it as it is already, and you can track your leads there. We do it actually in Splinks right now uh, in our team. You can do it the same way in your business. So let's start 
quickly with that. When we open our splings, we have here our dashboard, okay, with a customer amount, all this stuff, and there are two menus. The first one, of course, starts with the tariff plans, which we define our tariff plans and we define our uh, voice and custom and one-time services. Then we have CRM and customers. They, these two fields are very similar and the, even the tables are very similar, but it contain two different type of uh, customers. The first one is a customer. So customer is someone who pays me recurring revenue, recurring payments for my services or the prepaid or whatever. So this is already someone who has connection with me, who has a contract with me. And then I can have hundreds of thousands of customers who are not yet paying me. So they are just asking me for if there is a uh, coverage or if uh, we can offer them service or we just have these customers in our database and we are trying to approach them. Okay, so this is the CRM. So the CRM here shows me three clients that I have created. Of course, the easiest way how to create this client is I can create one uh, lead, let's say we call them leads. So I can create the lead here manually. So I add him uh, his full name, email, all the details that I, I got and I just add it. Uh, the other option is the option that we prefer in our business, and this is what you can also use, is you can put on your website the form that customer, when he will see the coverage and say, okay, I'm in the coverage, I would like to get the plan, this plan, 10 megabit for this price, and he signs up immediately on the website. Okay, we, for example, if you go to Splinks and you request the license, there is a form that we use. And you know we use Splinks in our net, in our business, which is not internet providing business, but we use it in our business as well because uh, it just helps us. We don't want to use other platforms. Okay, so this is when you grab the license immediately, the customer is created in the uh, Splink CRM. Okay, and what we did now in the 3.0 version, we have created the simple form script that is customizable that you can use in your website and I will show you right now how to do it like in a few seconds. So you go to your, when you upgrade to 3.0 of course, you go to your configuration and then there is a type CRM in the search and it will show you sign up widget on, on the CRM. The sign up widget, you define require, required fields that you would like to get from the customer, okay? And then you define the form how it, what is the form title, what is the button name, and what customer will see when he uh, sends you the, the form, okay? Then you define the partner, for example. I mean, in this scenario, I created two partners. One partner is used for uh, all customers, and the second partner is just used for customers who are signing up uh, automatically, okay? Just for splitting these clients and the level of partners here in, in the platform. It, you can choose the default one or you can leave as it is. And then the owner means the administrator who will, be, who will get assignment immediately. If I will get none, so they will be, there will be no assignment to the administrator of this lead to, to the salesperson, or, or I can always assign it to one person or to one group. And this is the code that I get. So what I do, this is the code, I can just copy this code and I can paste it to my website. Or in our case, uh, I open, this is, our website is based on the WordPress. So everyone has a no WordPress, I think. So I'm just going there, open a new page. So you can see I have created a new page, which is called test registration self sign up, self registration test. And I just paste it, copy pasted this form there. Okay, I just pasted it there and I created this form on my website. Okay, you see the form is there. I can define the size of it, play a bit with that, but this is the default. And also, I have the plans, which I have in my configuration of plans, I can define if the plan is available for self-registration or not. If I define it, then I have, I have created two plans that are available for self-registration. It's a 10 mega and 20 mega. Okay, my customer now can create for example, let's create Alexander and Vishnyakov and let's create Alex admin 
splings.com, he enters his data, he puts the streets, Herrera Jesus 5, for example, city of Rios, where I live now, and the zip code. So these are the fields that I can leave empty or I can just define the street and, leave, and, and I can uh, make them required, non-required, depends on how I would like to make this form for a customer. So customer selects the plan, says I would like to get 10 meg. Okay, there is a capture to not to prevent the bots sending me the messages and I send the request. Okay, when the customer sends the request, there is a message that is displayed. Thank you for your uh, query and our sales manager will contact you during one day. What happens now? In Splinks, immediately this customer was created. Let's go here on the CRM list and refresh. Here it is, here is the customer. And also because we, this form also creates a quote immediately based on what customer have selected. So I can, for example, select that this customer can buy only the bundle that includes the installation fee, the voice service and the internet service. And then immediately when customer signs up, there is a quote already configured for him. So there is a quote, I open this quote, you can see it's a PDF with the company name, with my details that I configure in my platform. And for my customer, and this is the price that I sent to my, or I offer to my client. I can edit this quote, I can work with this quote, and then I, I send it to the customer. So there is a send button, so the quote is sent to the email. So if you would like to prepare this professional quote and send to the customer, you can do it this way. It's done automatically, okay? So when I do send, I just type the subject, say I can use my templates of the messages and I send this quote to my client saying, okay, this is my price for you. If you agree, please confirm and we will just, uh, if, if he requires it, some people just don't require, you can make a call to this customer and say, okay, this is your offer. We are going to connect you in a few days, in five days. Is it fine for you? He says, yes, it's fine for me, okay? When the customer confirms, I can convert him to the real client so to the paying customer or we are going to the next step before i go to the next step which is the connection so this is my leads so if i will open and show you how we work in springs for example in my with our leads with customers who signs up sign up here in in our website we can see that i see, i have some my, my leads that are displayed to me or I can show all leads and I can select only leads for a certain period of time people who who bought or who uh, sent us the request okay so this is the time of edit for example we can see this is the period of time from 2019 I can display only customers that or only potential leads that have uh, sent us the request for our software or in your case for internet connection for uh for march okay in march this is the leads and there are different stages the stages of leads i can configure i configure them in splings so in your case it can be customer who is an under site survey customer who uh, already said that he wants to buy and customer who is thinking about or we are doing we are he's out of reach for example okay these are the types of the statuses that you can configure in the splings configuration so it's fully configurable okay in our case for example as a software company, we use communication, first touch, and the trial. So these are the, the stages. And then I see in this table, I see the customer names, I see the date when they're added, and I see the latest activity, that the email was sent, uh, there were no calls. This actually, at the moment, this field we fill in uh, manually, but in the next version of Splinks 3.1, we will get the full email and voice connectors to this and that will be grabbed automatically. Also outgoing and incoming calls. This is what we are planning in the next, in the next release and we will put a lot of efforts in delivering that. But that's actually how we work with, with the leads. So when the lead is uh, ready, let's say for connection. So he says, yes, I would like to connect. We need to plan his uh, connection. We need to schedule the connection. We need to create a task. So there can be different tasks and different projects. Before I will continue with that, let me quickly read the messages uh, on the chat if everything is clear until that step or if uh, 
if there are some questions. Yes. Some of the questions and answers, I will answer them after the presentation, okay, because they are not related to what I'm uh, showing that now. The one question which is related is if I'm grabbing uh, the video. I hope so. Yes, I'm recording and uh, it will be available on YouTube. Good. So until now, as I said, the first step, we need to get our customer on board. So the customer, we are in touch with him. We are tracking his communication with him. This customer who is lead, he can also send us the message and the email and we can communicate on tickets with him. Okay, if all our communication is on tickets, you can see that this customer, he's even not customer, he's just a lead, he's not paying us anything, but already all these customers, I can have them in tickets, okay? I can send them the messages, create the ticket. If he writes me back, everything is created in ticket and everything is stored in one place. It doesn't matter if he's already paying me or if he's not paying me, okay? So this communication is already tracked. But as I'm saying, the first step is, okay, we, customer is ready to get connected. Let's go to the step number two. Okay, we need to connect him. How to do that? We need to create a task. So there is a customer and there is a create a task option. Okay, I can go and create a task. And you can see that it opens the scheduling module with a task management. There is a task which is, uh, by default, it's empty, but I have templates that I can also configure. You can configure your own templates, and there are some templates that we preset. For example, I want to connect a new customer. So I load template values, and it loads me the checklist, it loads me the partner, it loads me some kind of like uh, who is assigned this ticket, uh, this task to whom it is assigned. I can change it, okay? I can, for example, this customer, I rather prefer in the title to not set just the connect client but I will just put his name and I will set his address so for example it's a career Jesus okay Rios center so this is the task that for connection the new customer I have created in this task management before we started the webinar I have created uh, two um, projects the one is a new connections and the other is repairs of course you can connect you can create third or fourth projects, for example, infrastructure work, where you can put all the tasks that are needed uh, for engineers to prepare, to change the routers, to change the towers, the equipment and towers, to set the new towers, all this stuff you can create in the separate project and it will not be mixed in one uh, table and in one view. So I'm creating now one task, which is called new connection. Okay, there is an address for this, uh, connection which is taken from the customer customer data that he filled I can fix it I can change it a bit I can add geo data which are separate from this address that was preset and the checklist for connecting the customer the checklists are also set in the configuration I can have my own checklist and the workflow currently for this type of project I have only three steps it's to do when someone is working on that connection, on that task is, is in progress, and then it's uh, done, which is the third stage. That's all. So I create my task and I do not, I can immediately schedule it and say, okay, I would like to connect this customer on Friday, for example, 5 p.m. But I don't know who I will assign this task to. So for, for now, I will just leave it and I will just add this task to uh, anyone okay so I will not schedule it I'll just add it to the pool of tasks to the backlog as we call it pool of tasks for this project okay this is a new task that I have created when and the same way I can create other other tasks for new connections for repairs and then I will have my pool of tasks per project let's go to the uh, two views let's say the, the one view is my calendar okay the calendar and the calendar, I have my administrators available, and I see there uh, based on the project again. I can choose all my projects, or I can use only one project to see the work on the particular project of this administrator. So for example, now I'm displaying only one type of project, which is a new connection. But I have also repairs and site surveys. So I would like to see if this person, this administrator, or 
we have administrator or group of administrators. So you can group many administrators under one uh, group. For example, two installers can work in the one group. Three installers are part of one group, okay? And then you assign ticket to the group, not to the administrator. In this simple case, I'm assigning it to one administrator, which is the Alex installer. Okay, this administrator, Alex installer, I see that he's quite busy already, okay? These are the tasks that are in his calendar. So 4 p.m. today, he got to connect this customer. I can open this task and see exactly what, what is going on there. Yeah, I was playing with that a bit, so it's already done. But this task, for example, is in to-do, and I see the customer. I can go to this. I can edit this task immediately from here, or I can open this task in the separate view and see, okay, what is the, uh, what is the task? Then I go to my uh, calendar back, and I can say, okay, all connections, all projects, and I can schedule this new task for the administrator. For tomorrow, let's make it for... 3 p.m., for example. I schedule it for this administrator, assigned to administrator, which is Alex, and then I schedule it for Friday, and I choose three. Three for estimated time is one hour. When I confirm it, then the task is here. So, from now, I'm the manager who is managing and who is assigning the tasks to the team. The installer, can connect, first of all, he can connect his Google Calendar directly to Splinks. So if we go, for example, there is a, my billing, here it is. If you go to the live Splinks that I have and I go to my administrator, my profile, then you can see that I have a scheduling option. I have my Google Calendar, so to connect it, I just need to click this button and uh, continue a few steps, just co copy the code from my calendar, enter it there, and then I see my calendar, Alex at Splinks.com, which is enabled and working. So immediately when I create something here in my calendar, the Splinks connects to the Google and gra gra uh, grabs the new task there, or pushes the new task there, and the new task is immediately on the Google calendar. So it means that, okay, I have my Google calendar also synchronized here with my iPhone immediately in my calendar iPhone I have uh, here my, my tasks immediately in the calendar okay another thing when I do this every day in the morning the installer will receive the email saying okay tomorrow morning he'll receive the email saying there are four tasks waiting for you to do and this is the time and this is the place where they are please log into your app to get the statistics and get the uh, like details of each single task, okay? He can log in there and he can get the details. From me as an administrator, this is what I will show you now is how this app works. For me as an administrator, for example, I'm used to work with the workflows. I would like to open my workflow and see how many tasks per, per different project do I have. So for example, I choose new connections and I see, okay, for this week, I have to do two tasks. They were not started yet and they are all assigned to one administrator, okay? To this or to one group. This is the list and then I will see the progress on the end of the week of all the work. So here are only three tasks but you can imagine that I can have hundreds of these tasks or, or, or per project, okay? So I can have a project repairs where is another two tasks. Okay, this is my view for a workflow for getting to understand how many of this work I have still, still to do. And uh, then in the list of tasks, I have, I can display all my tasks, like in the one view, and I see, okay, there are many things to do in the different projects. This is the table view. Okay, this is the work that administrator and the person, the manager does, who plans the work. But uh, I'm an installer. And I wake up in the morning, I got the email saying, okay, you have to connect four customers today. One of them is repair, three of them are new connection. And open that uh, app to get the information. This is what I'm going to do now. I will try to open my app and share my phone now. Just give me a second. We'll try to do the sharing. Share and here my phone 
iPhone via cable. Here it is. Okay. Just go disable my video. Here it is. I hope that you guys can see the 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 telephone now. Just if you can please on the chat or somewhere confirm that you can see that because I'm not sure about this share screening always. Yeah, chat. Yes, good. So let's go to that. There is a scheduling map. You can see that. So it's available for iOS and it's available also for um, uh, what is the second one? The Google one, Google Play, because <laughs> I used the Apple and I for, forgot how the Android is, thinks it's called. Okay, here we see my task. Immediately you can see when I logged in, it updated. Okay, it updated. I had before five tasks. Now we have done one more task and it is updated. The one, the one is gray saying that this was done already. Okay. Actually, you can see that it was done because I was playing a bit before uh, this presentation. So I was playing a bit with this task and I marked it as a done. Okay. I see that for today, I have one more task. I can open this task and continue working with that. Uh, let me show you quickly the app, what it has. So here on the left, we have a menu. So this menu, we can go through the settings, through the options of the, of the app. Actually, it's nothing like really big. Uh, synchronize means that the data, if, customer, if the installer is out of reach of the uh, internet, the data are stored locally on the app. And then when he goes off online, you can push all the data to Splinks uh, from the app, okay? And update everything what, what he was doing there. Uh, let's open one task, okay? I can open the task which is the next one, which is the second one. Okay, the career Jesus was already done, but the next one for today is Site Survivor Rio Center. Okay, I open that. Here is the description of task. Okay, you see there is a description. Then we have a time tracker that can be used. It's not necessary to use it, but uh, I prefer to use it. So if, if because if uh, we will teach installer to use it, it immediately, uh, moves the statuses of the task, which I will explain now. So then we have, we will scroll down, we have a customer details and we have his address. So if I type there, there is a button to click to go to the Google Maps and it will show me how far is that from my place. Okay, you see this like four minutes by wall. Okay, let's go back. And then we have, yeah, this is the map where I can see it also here on the map. Uh, we can add, my own comments there so he can add and say okay customer not reachable for example so he can write a comment customer not reachable and he saves it and again i will show you that all the updates and what he's typing now will immediately appear in splings if he has a connection okay so this is the first or if he goes and he says okay i'm going to start with that work so he needs to tap to start the task. This is what he is doing now. Yeah, just click this button here and it says start tracking. If he is starting tracking, immediately the task is moved to the progress. And if he closes the app, if he just uh, puts it to the pocket somewhere, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know? So if he already start tracking, it is starting tracking his time of work. You see, this is starting to. So now I can go to my other tasks. Now I can just go to my Gmail. I can just walk the telephone, whatever, work on the installation. And then when I open that, I open my task, it's tracking the time continuously. So this is what it's going to, uh, it's, it's working still and it's tracking the time. And now when I do this, when I stop it, I have the pause option or I have a stop option. The stop option means that it will close the task and mark it as done. As you can see, here is the progress. In progress, its status means that, okay, he's doing that. But if he stops it, it will just close that task. And, or if he can also, there is an option to change it here directly. But if he uses the time tracking, if he stops tracking, 
it will move it immediately to the status done. So this is what happens now, done. So he logged one minute of work and the task you can see here is marked as done. In this task, what he can do else, he can attach some attachments, some document or the photo. So for example, we do not have yet here in this uh, tasks, task management, we do not have uh, the option to uh, sign the document yet. That will be probably in the next version. So let me check in this task if it will give me the option to, you know, something happens, it doesn't want. <laughs> Yeah, but there is a one task that I just, during the test, I was attaching this attachment. So that was a photo. And this photo immediately should appear on the, let's try to check back. And that's what we can do. We can try that and log in back here. Yes. Good, attachment. This is what happens. I don't know if it's with a guy from, with a Apple presentation that also happens or not. <laughs> this is funny. I was attaching the photos here hundreds of times and now it doesn't want to attach me. No. Let's go to the next step then is, okay, in activity, I can see what was, what was going on there with that, with that app, with the activities of the administrator. And uh, actually that's, that's all with that, uh, with the app. So of course he has the calendar and the calendar, he can view the tasks only for today. He can view the tasks for the uh, weekly. And in the map, he can see how many uh, deployments are waiting for him in the next uh, two days. Okay, so this is showing him the connections of customers, where they are and what, uh, what he needs to do. So he can open that, it, it shows him the task and then he can go to the task and open the details. Okay, so that's what we have here and I'm still trying to attach the document and it doesn't work. Yeah, shame on us. Let's go to the, now to the scheduling, if I will stop sharing that and I will share again my screen, we can see that if I open my workflow and I go to the new connections, So for example, in that connection, if I open that, I say, okay, there is a, this is what I was doing just in five minutes before, before I run the latest update of the version of the plot of the mobile app. And this is the picture that I uploaded there. Okay, so that was the picture that, that was uh, uploaded, the checklist that I filled in with the, and this is uh, the comment. I can also see that I have added a comment to my customer gave us old router, for example. Okay, so this is what was done in the app and I immediately see it here on the uh, view of the administrator. Okay, in the side survey, so this is the, you see this is the work that we just done on the app. We walked there one minute, so you see there, walk, walked one minute, estimated one hour, and uh, yeah, unfortunately I was not able to attach the file, but it had to appear there. And uh, there are two watchers on the task. Yeah, the, each task has a watcher which is notified that this task was moved from the status new to status done. So there are notifications to administrators who are watching the task. But when customer was connected there to the network, when he is activated, we need to, he's still in the CRM. So this customer, for example, he's still in the CRM and we need to convert him somehow. So when we connect him to the internet, we need to convert. Uh, this is the button convert. So this is the last step in the CRM and connection is to convert him and make him a paying customer. Oh, my video disappeared so I can show my face again here. Yeah, hello. And now let's go to convert. 
uh, when I convert, it gives me the options. I can choose my quote because the customer can have multiple quotes. So he probably gets one offer and then he asks for another offer, especially if it's a company. Okay, so they wanted 100 megabit line with a free voice over IP calls with the five numbers. And then next week they wanted a different uh, service. And so I have two quotes. So I select the quote that we, I will apply for this customer. I continue with the selection of what? It's not, it's not needed to select. So I can just convert now, click one button, and immediately the customer appears in the customer list. With a, but if I will not choose the quote, it will not create him any service immediately, okay? Because this customer was asking for 20 Mac line, and there is a quote automatically created, so when I convert him, it immediately creates him the service. And if I want, Splings can immediately create him the invoice as well from this quote, okay? The quote, the invoice can be created immediately right now after converting this customer. Or if I don't want, I can continue to the next step because if I convert now, then it just creates the service and the invoice. If I continue, I can tune a bit his settings of his services. So if he has an internet service, I can say, okay, I don't want actually to charge this client right now. I want, and I don't want to charge to set him the invoice. Uh, I will connect him or physically start billing him from 1st of April, okay? So this is what I can do. Or I will just set, I want to charge this customer for a whole month of March, okay? You know, the Splings can charge customers for a partial March or it can charge customer for the whole March. Here I will set, okay, I want to charge this customer 20 euro, 20 dollars for 10 mega or 10 uh, for his required plan immediately from the 1st of March for the whole month, okay? And the invoice will be created right now. This is what I'm going to do. I can set up, of course, his login, password. So this is like a conversion and activation of customer. I don't have to create him the service, log into the open the service as I had to do before, okay? I just convert the lead to the client doing this, this one step. Okay, I convert it to customer and let's check what will happen. Like the customer, immediately was moved to the customer section from the CRM. His account balance is minus 20. Why? Because there is an invoice that was created for the client. There is a 20 dollar invoice, 20 euro, 20 rand, whatever. And this is the tax invoice with the description. And I didn't set any VAT for now, just to not confuse anyone. I just set it to 0% because any, every country has different VAT settings, but I set it for zero for now. That's an uh, invoice for the client. Uh, one notice, one uh, announcement about uh, Splinks 3.0 that we have created two more uh, very advanced PDF designs. So finally, when the customer is, uh, when our client is trying to set up Splinks, he can choose one of two. Uh, very advanced designs of the invoice and also of the payments of the statements they and all this and the, especially invoice is very advanced because it has the voice over IP information included there so if there are any calls it displays you the calls if you want you can activate the CDR listing showing the, all the calls details everything there is pre-configured already in Splinks you don't have to create a special PDF Additionally, of course, we can customize still and uh, there are many customers who say, okay, your design is very nice, but we want to maintain our old design. Please uh, deliver that. We can do this, but as I'm saying now, we have uh, two designs that cover different scenarios. Also, we have tuned uh, default uh, templates of messaging. So when the message is uh, sent out to the client, uh, it's already well structured and uh, it's already pre-configured. So when you install the version, you will see all these templates of the messages and templates of PDFs there. Okay, when we got the client and he's on the invoice, so this actually, this is already, and this is the Splinks, the previous, previous version, we're very similar, nothing happens here. We have a customer, we have his information there. We know there is a history, what was happening with that, with that customer, we can, locate and geodata and match uh, on the map his coordinates if, if it can find it i think i have to write it this way yes so it can find it there and i save uh, regarding the maps that we use we have support of three maps 
uh, the Microsoft Maps, the Google Maps, and the OpenStreetMap that is installed by default here. Uh, yeah, the one Christophs wrote me here uh, on the chat, I tried to schedule an app on Android and it was crashing, probably because I have not upgraded Splinks. First of all, we need to upgrade Splinks to version 3.0 latest. And the second one, what can happen is what, I've, what we found and what we are now fixing quickly is if administrator doesn't have enough permissions, he will not see the app. So he will open the app and it will close again. Okay, if there is like a missing permission to get uh, information about leads, for example, information about customers or similar. Okay, but we are fixing it now in a few days. We'll just update that. And if customer has an, uh, if administrator has a mobile app enabled, there will be enough permissions. Or at least it will show him the message that permission was not enough. But this is what I found. Like five of our customers started to use that and four of them said, okay, we uh, are in stores. Uh, their app is not working. So we, we found that they had to fix a bit permission. Uh, I will just check if there is a someone. Guys, if, if there is a someone from our team, I hope there there is. Please, can you share the document with permissions that we have? Navigator, so I'm just checking if it's... Yeah, Chris, please, if you can share this documentation here on chat, so Christophs and other people can click there and check, uh, check the link to set correct permissions for installer. Yeah, so that is, let's say, we did two steps. So we, we tracked the communication with customer, we offered him our service, we converted him to the paying client and we connected him, okay? So when we got this all done, then the customer is already starting to pay us. As you know, as, as I'm saying, probably 80% of today uh, visitors of the webinar will are customers of Splinks, and I don't have to explain them that we have around 20 payment gateways, but if you are not using Splinks yet, we have different payment gateways. For example, I saw there was a message uh, in the question and answer if we have in Canada, which is, uh, what was that, Moneris. Yes, we have integration with Moneris in Canada. So it's a payment gateway that allows you to receive the payments, I think, from the credit cards. Uh, we have that. In South Africa, we have uh, SagePay, we have PayFast. In uh, other countries, we have, uh, in Australia and New Zealand, we have local gateways there, like IntegraPay, uh, Payment Express. In, uh, in Europe, we have SEPA, we have GoCardless. Plenty of these payment gateways are already integrated with Splings. So when we got here on the finance option, we choose the invoices, you can see that there are invoices that were created automatically by Splinks. I can create uh, invoices, Splinks can create invoices automatically, as you know, on a recurring basis, and I can see the history here in the preview. So for example, there, there is a invoices created for the date of 1st of April. So it means that I simulated creation in the future and it created four invoices for me. I can simulate the creation of invoices in the future. This is a very nice option, especially for example, if you would like, if now we have uh, March and you would like to charge your invoices for May, you can do that. So this is what I can do now. I can just go to my first of May and make a preview and that will create uh, the invoices that normally should be created on the 1st of May, but I can enforce that and I can create them right now. Okay, this is the question I have ma many times people are asking me, can we enforce the creation of invoices for March? Can we do it in 20th of, of February? Yes, you can do it in 20th of February. At the moment in version 3.0, you can do the way how I did. So you just choose the date of creation of invoice and you confirm it and then you create these invoices with the date of today. Okay, uh, we are going in the next version, we're going to a bit automated also, so you will be able to set it to not log in every month to generate these invoices in advance. You'll be able to set it in the settings, say, okay, I want to have invoices generated 20th of February for March or 20th of March for April. That will be available in the global configuration. Right now, we have always to log in there once per month and generate invoices in, the, in advance. If I generate invoices in the same month. So 1st of March, I generate invoices for March. Splinks does it automatically. So it creates this file automatically. 
If you do not confirm this file for three days, it auto confirms it. If you do, then I, it does this way. So I, I confirm and I select invoicing date. I want to have invoicing date now. So now today is 12th of, 12th of March. So I confirm it. And you can see that Splinks created a bunch of invoices. Now, let me refresh. So we had nine invoices before, and now we have 15 invoices. 15 invoices, I can see what, what is the, uh, what do I charge for? I charge for 10 MegaNet for the service. So this customer was not charged even from April, so it created him two months invoice. Okay, so then we can open another customer and just, check what is his plan and what is his charge. This customer was charged before till end of April and I charge him only for May. Okay, uh, why I'm showing that? Because I would like to continue to the accounting part, to the accounting integration. As I mentioned, we have connected three accounting platforms already, but uh, at the moment, Splinks can connect to any accounting platform. It's just a matter of time. It's just a question of time. How long that will take us to connect to their API. But in general, I will show you now a few uh, basic things that are set up in Splinks. Okay, I will have another video and another tutorial showing exactly step by step how to connect Zero and how to connect Sage One. But in general, I will explain it quickly now. In the configuration, we have the option that is called accounting. So if I open my accounting here, accounting, accounting, there are accounting categories, accounting tax rates, accounting and uh, accounting bank accounts. Okay, so these are the things that we, first of all, we connect to the accounting platform and we grab all the information that is configured then and there, and then we match this configuration in splings with the values that are in zero. So first of all, for example, I will explain the zero, but uh, please note that Sage one is exactly the same. Okay, exactly the same configuration. So if I go to my, first of all, what I did when I was playing with the zero, so I had to activate it in my add-ons. So in my add-ons, there is an option, there is a module that is called zero integration, so I had to install it. When I installed it, then I went to my basic configuration of the module, which was my second step. And here is the zero accounting. So when I click on that, it shows me if it is enabled or not. So first of all, I enable it. And then there is a configuration, the basic, basic, basic stuff. So where I set up this, I do not touch because these are the settings of my API of Splings. But uh, here I define my... Uh, settings of my zero app so there is a like client id client secret that i can create on zero and then i define for example if i'm pushing payments to zero what kind of payments i'm going to push okay and that i will explain now so there are other options bank statement group payment method id all the stuff that i can configure this is the default settings. I almost didn't touch anything here. I just set up that I want to push all the payments from Splinks to zero, except the payments that I receive from zero itself. Okay, this is, I will explain the logic now on the charts. But this is the first thing that I can figure. And another thing that we have is what I was showing here is that in the configuration, we have accounting categories, accounting bank accounts, accounting tax rates. So when I connect my accounting, I need to define, okay, there is a tax, which is called in zero. So this is load. The load button says, okay, in Splinks, we operate with the one text currently, which is the VAT. This VAT can be matched to one of these sales uh, taxes or taxes that are available on zero. So first of all, I load the list of the zero taxes and say, okay, my VAT is, is tax on sales. This is my first step, what I did. The second step, what I did, I went to the bank accounts and in zero because I want to push my payments out of Splinks to, to, to zero because of some reason, but I will explain why. So I had to uh, create to create one bank account, special account in zero and load this bank account and match it with uh, Splinks. Say in Splinks, I will use all my payments. I will push to this bank account in zero. Okay. And then 
Another one was the accounting categories. Accounting categories are my account numbers. In Zero, I have account numbers. In Sage One, I have account numbers. So I grab all the account numbers and I say, when I create the new service, so that will be mapped to the account number service here, for example. Okay, this is what we can, we can find the name, account receivable. All this stuff I can match to my categories. In Springs, there are one, two, three, four, five default categories and I can add as many categories as I want. Why these categories are uh, important and where they are used? When I create my invoice and there is an item on the invoice, the item has a category, okay? And this category belongs to the account number of zero or account number of Sage One. And these categories in Springs, they are default five, but I can say that even each my single tariff plan will have an own account number, own category. So then I will have very deep analysis on what's going on in my accounting, okay? Or I want to have my fiber connections on one account number in accounting and my wireless connection on other account number in accounting. I can do that with adding more categories and matching these categories with account numbers in zero. So to add more categories, I just go to my config and there is a categories of transaction categories, where they are, here they are. And I can add many, you see this is, I can add the new transaction category that will be called wireless connections, for example. And this wireless connection, I can add to certain tariff plans inside my tariff plans. When I go to my tariff plans, I define that this wireless is from category wireless connection. This and all services created from there will get this category. And this category, what I shown before, I will just match or map to the account number in zero. So this is what um, accounting, accounting categories, here they are. You can see there is a wireless connection, so I can choose this and say this is something. Okay, uh, payroll wages, of course not, but uh, some kind of, I don't know what is there here, but sales, for example. Nah, let's do it that way. This is the logic. So now I have matched all my bank accounts. I have matched my uh, categories, account numbers, everything is done. Um, and now is the, the most important part. How do, we, how do we synchronize information between two platforms? Let me show you a bit of my presentation again here. So this is the presentation. So just, I will try to start from the current slide. Yeah, I hope that this works because now it's a full, just give me a second, full view. And I don't see your chat when I show it. So we have three platforms, just I, I'm waiting for confirmation from Chris, if you can see this, yes, good. So you can see that uh, structure. Splinks, zero, and there are payments, okay? The first option, how we work with the zero or with the Sage one or with any other accounting platform. We push, we add all customers, we add all information, invoices to the Splinks, and we work in Splinks. Then we push out customers and invoices to zero. And this is, and to accounting platform. This is the way how we work with any, any platform, and any accounting platform. Everything is stored in Splinks. So customer has uh, access to his client portal. He has access to his live bandwidth. Yeah, this is a nice feature that I almost forgot to show you. <laughs> and uh, then from this uh, platform, we push all the information to zero. Customers invoices with all correct account numbers. This is scenario number one. And then where do we receive payments? And this depends how you currently work with your accounting platform. How, if you are happy with the platform and if you are happy with uh, payment gateways that you have in that. So if you are not using the payment processing inside your accounting platform, for example, um, I have customers who, uh, 
who use platform that uh, payment platform that is not supported well by accounting. Okay, so do they do have direct payments from Splinks? Or for example, if your customers are paying you with a credit card, so you send them the link and he pays. So you need to send them the link from Splinks, not from Zero, because they have everything in one portal. So if this payment is goes to Splinks, then what we can do, we can push these payments out to Zero. Okay, this is scenario number one. So we are pushing everything from Splinks to Zero. Scenario number two is when the payment is processed inside Zero. So another scenario. So there are some customers of of Splinks who do not have any payment gateways in Splinks. They want to have everything processed. They have a bank connections to zero and they want to make bank reconciliation immediately in zero. And they don't want to process the payments in Splinks. We allow them to do this. We say, okay, process your payments inside zero, but then we will take these payments and mark them. We will connect zero as the payment, let's say gateway for us. And then we'll just grab it from payments from there and we will mark the payments and set the payments inside Splinks. Okay, so all your payments and uh, reconciliation of payment is done there. And, but please grab your payments. And there is another third scenario. This is, and the Sage, I put Sage one because we did it already in the Sage one and uh, we also prepared and, and did it in a, in a zero, but it's not yet deployed anywhere in the real production deployment. But in Sage one, it works this way. For example, Sage one has connection, direct connection to the South African banks. Uh, but uh, customers in, of Splinks, uh, they we need to, them to pay credit cards from the from uh, client portal. Okay, it means that Sage Pay, PayFast credit cards, everything is paid directly in Splinks, and we push these payments out to Sage One. You see, this is the green green arrow, uh, arrow, and and then we have a red arrow, which means uh, bank fees are, are processed in Sage One, and we grab these payments into the Splinks, and Splinks knows that these payments came from Sage One and it doesn't push it back, okay? So this is how it works. This is scenario number three, which is a, a bit complicated, but it works, so we designed that it will work. So if we see in Splinks that there is a payment from Sage One, we are just ignoring that and we are not putting, putting it there. We are not pushing it there. And you, I shown you the settings when I say which types of payment I'm going to push to zero. To zero. And I have selected everything except zero. So this is exactly to uh, have this two-way payment processing. So it can look a bit complicated, but uh, the logic is quite simple behind it. Okay, now I can stop sharing this and show you the real example of, uh, of how we do this uh, synchronization. Okay, this was the, just a picture. But in real deployments, we have in administration, we have zero or I think it's, a, no, it's accounting integration. So if I open that, so this is the main part of Splinks integration with accounting platform. These are the tables of customers, invoices and payments. You can see that we have a customer and we have accounting ID of this customer and we are always tracking if the customer was modified or not. So if I change something on the customer, he immediately becomes modified. If he becomes modified and there was no synchronization after this modification, he will be put on the queue and his data will be pushed out to update it to uh, the accounting platform, okay? So these are the customers. The same way it works with the invoices. So you see now we have created a batch of invoices. They were modified, but they were not pushed to accounting ID. So if my accounting is not working now, I don't have connection, Splinks doesn't care. Splinks tracks if this invoice was pushed there or not. And when he has a, a time and when he has a ability, he, can, he pushes these invoices. I can set up if it will be pushed automatically every hour, every, every day, or if I do it uh, myself once per, once per week or whatever. Okay, so this can be done. Uh, I can click the button and enforce it. This is what I will show you that. So these invoices were not pushed to, to zero yet. And then I have the payments. These payments are here also, like modified. No, these are the payments that we pushed to, to zero. That's, that's what we have here. And let me open zero now. And let's check what we have there. So I'll just close this, this and that. 
and this is my testing account. We have here customers. You see five customers. You owe them, they owe you almost nothing. Here I was playing a bit with that. But if I would push all my invoices, first of all, it should create me a few new customers and it should create me also the invoices. With the, and it, as I said, it will put already all the items to the correct account numbers because I have preset and splits. Let's do that. Uh, so I can wait till the end of the day when everything will start be pushing out. Uh, or I will just go there and we have a, in configuration there is a zero uh, account accounting and here are the options export customers to zero export invoices to zero export new payments to zero or import new payments from zero because as I said we can also process the payments there and import them to splings and this is the import mapping setting into splings uh, the new thing that we are also adding and we have just added it to Sage one is if you have existing customers in this links and the zero We will give you the way how to track uh, Connect these customers together. Okay, because this is one of the obstacles of the integration with accounting platform because company is already using some accounting software and they say okay well, I have 1,000 subscribers there and now I have 1,000 subscribers in Splinks. how I can connect that so what we did for Sage one I'm not sure if it is zero, this is already available. I will need to check. Sorry for that. But for Sage one, we did it. Uh, now this week it should be already available. And I don't know if Muhammad Ali is already here. He's one of our clients waiting for that. So we will be uh, working together with, with him on that first connection, this uh, customers with uh, zero, uh, customers with Sage one, with customers on Splings. Okay, I do export my clients to zero. It doesn't export old customers of course so you see this is i see the lock here so it starts new customer synchronization and it created two customers joe smith and alexander vishnikov that i created today so it pushed two customers to zero so if i go to zero if i refresh that and uh, do i want no i don't want yes so they are customers they don't have invoices yet so they are they have been added as a context to zero but as soon as I will push the invoices, they will get, they will become customers in zero as well. Okay, let's go to the export invoices. And as I'm saying, it's not pushing all invoices, it's just pushing the invoices that were changed or were created based on the table that I shown you. Okay, there is a list of invoices that were pushed there. Let's go to zero, let's refresh. So first of all, the customers, they are now in the list of customers because they have invoice and then we see that they owe us something so if i go there to this client and i see his invoice this is the invoice actually that he has 20 us dollars and open the invoice i can process the payment here and then i can grab the payment inside splings or i can process the splings payment and splings and i can push this payment here so this invoice awaiting payment okay i think that the last thing that we can try to do is we can just open the invoices and we can push or we can try to process one or two payments just to see how that so Anthony Marcel so I will make a payment of that invoice I'll say that it is bank transfer and then I will go to the Alexander so this one and also I will set up the payment so this is as I'm saying we can synchronize payments two sides so we can synchronize uh, from Splinks to accounting and we can grab from accounting the payment and push it to Splinks, okay? So that's what I was playing with that here and we will see, for example, here are three payments that were taken from zero. Okay, these are the payments that were taken from zero. These are the payments that were processed directly in Splinks. So I have created two payments in Splinks now. This is usually, as I'm saying, this can be, for example, payment by credit card from the client portal. And uh, when the client uh, paid it, okay, I go to my administration, to my, uh, to my config, zero accounting, and then I click the button, export new payments to zero. As I'm saying, I don't have to do that. I can just leave it for a system and once per day, it will start doing that. Okay, and then we have one payment was there. There is a, probably some validation exception. I don't know what's going on, we will check. But if I will go to this client, I hope that he will be 
so his invoice was not paid but the payment yeah i have to check the logs why not maybe there is no type of payment is not synchronizing but this one payment was done so this payment why payment is refresh and there is no number of payments just let me check number receipt number yeah yeah if i will go then to my zero and in my i think it's an accounting bank accounts here i will see all the payments that came here it is balance and day and, and, and zero so i can see all these payments that came from springs yeah here it is payment alex vishnikov payment alex cherry payment id 10 received 10 and payment date i can do the reconciliation of that payment yeah can i open yeah this is the main logic is that yeah here is the invoice number invoice is paid now it is i think it just took some time to zero to match it together and i was too quick for it so now it shows correctly there is an invoice invoice was paid so in, in zero i have all these movements correctly done so and if i go to my administration and accounting integrations i will see that this customer was created no problems there invoice was pushed there also you can see their accounting created everything there and the payments were there and there is a one payment that gave us the error and we need to investigate what we have done incorrectly i think there is like i have created the payment in an incorrect way probably i have selected the uh, non-existing uh, method of payment that was not uh, pushed to, to zero it was not in the configuration but that's like in, in the walk I can see that there are errors and I can fix the error and I can check what's going on why it was not pushed there okay and if I think if I will open that payments let me check if there is a memo note is sent no there is no nothing there Okay, but there is another log where I can see what exactly which payment was not paired and I can go through it and find it there. This is uh, the logic and uh, the whole structure, the whole process of integration with accounting platforms. Okay, uh, we are open for any feedbacks. If something will not work correctly according to your accountant, we'll be able to change it. Okay, so this is the first, let's say, version with a zero, but uh we were designing it together with accountants so i hope everything will be correct let's go to the next step of our presentation so we have connected the client we have uh, activated him charged him already and even pushed everything to accounting few words about ticketing i see that the, we have still 82 uh person here at 82 visitors which is good so people are not leaving us it means that what i'm explaining makes sense good <laughs> well let's go to the tickets quickly to the tickets i would like to share with you always guys i i love to share the tickets what we have in our work as i said we had support 24 7 now and to deliver this uh, support we need to track the performance of it of each engineer and i'm pretty sure that we are not super 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 cool i mean in how we do the things and there can be some gaps and we still can improve a lot of things but already the ticketing platform that we use that helped us a lot to bring the level of support uh, much higher than it was one year ago for example so this is the ticketing platform if you are not using it yet please start using because it really helps a lot you don't need fresh desk you don't need zen desk you don't need any desk oh no any desk is a different platform it's for for remote connection but you don't need desks because blinks can desk everything for you so this is what we have here 
I shown it already on several presentations. If you are using it, you know it. You know, the dashboard that shows me my recent activity on the tickets, shows me the history of the tickets, what was happening. Uh, we have added additional features to the ticket. One feature is that you can have multiple emails. One email for sales uh, questions, another email for uh, support questions, another for incidents, and it will be assigned automatically to different people or to different groups of people, okay? So this is the first thing that we have added. Uh, we have added also the reports that I will show you, and I will show you how we work with that reports. Okay, here, let's open some of the tickets. We have, yeah, some of the, let's check, for example, on this one. And there you can see there is a ticket. Uh, the Chris is writing the ticket himself and saying this is the mistake, please make it. And then another guy from my team is writing the notes. So we do a lot of notes. The note is not visible to the customer. All communication is done on email. So if I write there my answer on that ticket, it gives me the reply option. I have my signature pre-configured. And when I send it, it goes to the customer on email. When customer writes me back the email, it also uh, receives it and pairs it here inside the ticket. Okay, from the tickets, what we did, we can create a task. So there is an action and create a task. And this task will be linked with a ticket. Okay, so, and then in task, you can go to the ticket, you can see who is the customer, you can work with that. And what I would like now quickly to show about the tickets is when we work with the tickets, when we work with all the support things, we track uh, the performance of our administrators. This is done on the administration, and then I go to my reports. There is a ticket report below everything on the right side. I click on that ticket report, and then we got ticket list. So this is the first of report that we use in our company. On the weekly basis, I have a dedicated person who is controlling the work of our uh, technical department. Uh, he is also controlling the work of the sales department, and he is also controlling if the all agreements that we agree during the week are done or not. So he is like a control, controller, controlling everything. So everyone in my team knows that they are controlled, and this, uh, first of all, it helps to maintain certain level of communication. It helps uh, to us to understand also that something was not going well. And uh, this, after this controlling, what we do is that we open the ticket, the person who does this controlling, and he, for example, this ticket, he makes the comment. He can write, okay, uh, answer was not that polite. Please check and uh, discuss, for example. or. Uh, router was changed two times incorrectly, mistake of engineer, okay? Of course, the engineer itself will never write that, so that's why we have a person who does this, and he says, okay, I'm saying that he was not that uh, good in the form, so it means that I will not make a form as a good, so I will just leave it Un un unmarked, but the timing of the response, response and was good and the feedback from the client were received uh, good. So it means I can make two of four marks for this, two of four stars for the ticket. So this is what he does. You see, and this is the, then I don't know where I changed it already, which it was, because it was selected for a different period, but uh, for example, this one. So, and it says two red signs. So I, or there is a support manager, he logs into the ticket and he just goes through the ticket, he reads there, he makes his own notes, the notes, and then we discuss it on a weekly basis with our team. Okay, this is how we uh, try to improve uh, the, the ticketing itself. Okay, the, the work with customers, with the customer support. Because tickets is only one helping tool. This can be used, it's, it's good for tracking, it's good for analyzing what's going on and then for example on a weekly basis i choose the week and then i see what is my average 
mark of the tickets that we have and if it in, uh, if it is growing or if it's declining so this is i'm trying to understand but what i'm i'm looking for is i'm looking for the red signs so if, if there is a red that means that something was not good in this ticket time was not good content means that engineer didn't provide correct solution to the to the problem okay and the uh, form means uh, that customer that, that it was not polite answer from our side okay so this is how we work with with this report that we fill in manually but it helps us a lot sla report so this report that can take some time i think the agent performance take time to load but this one is very good for us because here i i got all my team members that participate in ticketing and i can see per weekly on the weekly basis amount of answers that they send to customers and the time okay if customer wrote me the ticket if i answer them in three hours in six hours in nine hours or over nine hours when i open over what nine hours then we discuss and when we try to find what why we why we answered this ticket with this uh, doa okay when now we are working 24 7 so one of the reasons in our business for example is that one person is trying uh, to help the customer and he's not giving it to the person who is that who doesn't know what's going on okay so we rather prefer to answer like in one day but uh, with the same person who knows what he was doing okay than just sending answers every every hour from different people but this helps a lot this helps a lot with the new administrators when they come to understand if they are in the one to three hours that is what we are trying always to reach or if they are falling down okay so who is falling down here almost nobody now so it's not it's not that bad on that uh, agent performance on that week uh, and then agent performance this is that i will take a look a bit later i think this takes a lot of time to load performance distribution report it's just uh, per one administrator i can open for example nadim our support engineer in south africa one of them and then i just got his numbers for the march this is his first response time three okay if four to eight hours so this is what we need to improve for example in our in our business i don't want to get first response like in four hours why we do not answer like in, in two hours at least okay so this is what we are trying to to analyze and to improve and we speak with uh, each team member to improve that that stuff in the, in the performance and then i think agent performance this is something that took longer yeah this is this is the overall how many tickets were assigned how many tickets were reopened how many tickets were uh what was the average first res response it's for all customers in one table okay this i will not probably wait for that because it takes like one minute two minutes just to grab all this data for a selected period but these are the ticketing improvements that we did during this uh, version three steps raise the hand yeah I will try to answer some questions because I see three steps. I don't know how to give you the way to ask the question here in that too. <laughs> Sorry. I will try to find your questions. Can you write now some of well, what do you want to ask me? Uh, Chris Tubbs is saying, uh, can you show us how to generate once of invoice from quad instead of a recurring service? Yes, it's quite simple. It means that in the quad that I'm converting, I need just to select one time services there, not uh, the recurring ones. Because I, if I choose the plan and I set uh, the, we can, we can try that. It depends, different, different scenarios. But in general, I need to, I can choose installation only as a quote, or I can play a bit. What this is, we, we have to check together. 
Um, so at the moment, I have shown you the almost everything except this IPv6 stuff that I will discuss later. And uh, maybe it will be good now to answer some questions. Yeah, the, regarding the IPv6, I will have uh, several videos explaining the IPv6 deployments. In IPv6, uh, mainly today, all our customers that we have, they use PPPoE. And uh, as I said, 95% of customers, they use uh, Mikrotik routers, Mikrotik PPPoE servers. And what I found is that uh, Mikrotik has some issues with working correctly with assigning, assigning IPv6 pools over PPPoE. And that's what I will be describing maybe after answering the questions. Okay, so let me now quickly check the questions and, and ask for them. First question uh, from the chat. Is it possible to specify which tariffs can be displayed on the website form? Because in some cases, you create custom tariffs for a specific client and you don't want that tariff to show up on the website form. Yes, uh, we have the option to, uh, you can choose which tariff plan is going to be shown on the website. Can we have multiple tariffs installation installation fee? Yeah, this is the question. Let's try it now, for example. I can have, let's go to one tariff. Let's check if I have uh, installation fee here. A public IP address. Okay, I can add installation fee. Installation fee, oh no, this is one time, sorry. This is not custom, it's uh, actually one time, so I need to add it here. Yeah, there is an installation fee of $50. Okay, let's check one lead and let's create him a new quote with, with installation fee included. This one, for example, Andrew James. I can create the quote manually here. So it's what I shown you is when the quote is created uh, automatically from the website. I can edit this quote and I can add installation fee there. It's, it's, already, it's already here, but I can add a new quote saying, okay, let's go and let's choose for this customer this price, 20 mega, and let's give him the installation fee one time at now when i'm converting this client i will choose this one for 80 continue create active customer and invoice i think if let me check because as i'm saying i have a quote for him just for installation fee and then it means uh, that it will not create him the service okay this is what i can do but i have now both so i just would like to check what will happen if I will add the service start to the 1st of April, convert to customer. So this is what, I'm not sure when I have both things there. Edge, okay. What he got, 69.35. Uh, or I think, have I chosen that? It created me the invoice for that recurring service. And the start date, maybe I chosen different, just. So the, the idea was to not create that, to have this uh, from 1st of April, and not from the 12th of March. Just so let's try another one. Let's try this one quickly. Quotes. Add quote, and here we choose 20, and here we choose installation fee, and then we add it. 
Okay, as I'm saying, uh, the simple way how to create just one time is not add this to the quote. So then I'll have an installation fee for him and then I can add him uh, the service. But I think what you want to do, Christoph says that you want to convert this client and create him uh, the, yeah, so this is, yeah, I think I changed this. I have to change it inside the service. This, I will go there to continue. And here I need to change that to 1st of April. So let's try. I hope now it will be done. It will be fine. No, still not. Looks like this thing is not working there in that conversion. Cha. It still wants to create me the invoice. Mm, never mind. That we will fix if it's not working <laughs> strange okay let's go to the next question that i have there we'll be there in integration with google calendars yeah it's already there the integration with google calendars is already there you can just uh, connect it there with inside my profile so when when i log in as the administrator i have my profile and then i have to connect it there um, how do we reschedule the task uh, this is done from the scheduling option so when you go to the scheduling you can just uh, change the schedule time and change the person to who you schedule it and assign it to other person. Can you show how to generate? Okay, this is. Yeah, regarding the documentation, we are working now on the documentation of version 0.3. There is a one dedicated person, Nadim, one of our engineers. He is writing the documentation for version three and in general for Splinks, he's updating all the pictures and everything there. And, uh, but I will also, I, I'm also preparing the deployment guide. So the deployment list of steps to, um, to deploy Splinks in the production. So this is what I'm busy with the videos and some, some explanations of how to set up the things. Um, how can we reactivate a customer service for a great number of days without invoicing? I usually use it if a customer requests a compensation of day for poor service. This is you can use the discounts. Inside Splinks, there is a discount option always. So you can reactivate the service and you can set up the discount inside the service saying that the discount is here for a certain amount of, from starting till 12s, till 90s, and then you just, apply this discount for the customer. Um, what is the status of TR69 integration? We have just started with that. Oh, our chief of development is doing this and this is part of uh, 3.1 version that we will add. So because now we were focusing on the scheduling on all these features that I was showing you and TR69 is the next step. Yeah, Genia ACS around two years we spoke about that. Yes, we spoke about that, but amount of the requests for, uh, for this feature was not that high as the amount of requests for scheduling, for example, and for improvements in, in, the, in the CRMs. Because as you know, all the features that we add are based on the feature requests of, on the website. So this is what we do. We analyze uh, the requests and then we do the plan. The TR69, we finally, pushed Splinks to the, to the way, when, to the state, state when we can uh, deploy it already. Okay, so this is what we are doing. We have started it already a few weeks ago. So already development on that task is doing, working. Um, can we modify, change billing engine to deduct user credit immediately when adding internet service account? Yes, you can do that. For that, you need to, set up recurring uh, instead of recurring you need to set up prepaid billing engine okay prepaid billing engine allows you to deduct immediately money when customer just is getting service so we have customers in certain regions 
Uh, we have customers in Libya, in India, using this way of billing. So it means customer brings the money and immediately when it starts, he gets his account, uh, he gets his payment. Uh, like it, we charge him, Splinks charges him immediately in that day. Yeah. Andrew Williams is asking that at the moment they use Mikrotik Cloud Core for queuing and bandwidth management. How do I integrate Splinks to do that? I recommend you to send us a short message to support at splinks.com, then schedule a call with Chris or with Nadim or with me, and we will show you how to do that. It's very, it's not difficult. Okay, it's, I will not explain it here on that webinar because this webinar is more about 3.0 features and stuff that we have added now. The bandwidth management and queuing is already there in Splinks for two years, and uh, we will be uh, very happy to help you with this configuration. It will take like 10, 15 minutes to do the things together, okay? Mm. So I will just maybe continue now to IPv6 quickly to finish this topic and I will come back to the questions because there are so many questions there still unanswered. Uh, there was a one question from Heiko. When do we do the PPPoE plus IPv6 session? This is what I want to show you now. So, and uh, as, I'm, as I said, I would like to show that, I wanted to show that for, uh, for the web, uh, for a presentation and Mic and the Micrati conference, but it was cancelled. So at least here I will be showing that. So here is the first testing setup that I was playing with, and here you can see there are different customers that I have connected to IPv6. These customers, they have different routers. So some of them, they have Mikrotik routers and some of them, they have fiber router Nucom. And I think one has TP-Link. So I tried four or three different routers to connect. Everything on the CPE side was working fine. Unfortunately, from Mikrotik side, it was not working as expected. So we had to hack a bit the Splinks radius, write some additional things there to support working with uh, IPv6, uh, IPv6 on uh, Mikrotik. I think we are the only one company, the only one radius that now has support of PPPoE IPv6 for Mikrotik, okay? So let me quickly explain what the IPv6, how it looks here. So we have, first of all, we have added the native uh, IPv6 management. So if you have IPv6 here, just give me a second, I'll maybe change it to English quickly. Um, okay, localization just and I will show you there now it's in English. Good. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have networking, IPv6 networks there. We define one large network that we have got that we got from our uh, uh, RIPE or from Ephrenic, uh, slash 39, and then uh, slash 32, I mean, and then from these networks, we define slash 48 networks that we will use for allocation to end customers. Okay, so I will not explain now the basics of IPv6 address management. It's a quite complicated. I will try to explain it in the article and another video that I will send later. But the idea is that, okay, I have a big pool. From this pool, I have a slash 48 networks. Slash 48 networks, I can connect 64,000 customers with thousands, thousands of devices behind their CPE, okay? And each customer, he receives one slash 64 network on his CPE device. So what we do from the Splinks, we do we say okay this is the ip or we can track it and we say this is the ip that is used network that is used by devices of customer 
So this is the, like a local network, let's say LAN for a customer perspective. On his CPE, he has a LAN, but there is no NAT anymore. So, and this is the network that is used by end customer devices. This network is his telephones, his TV, his computers, they go out to the internet with this range of IPs, okay? There are multiple, several, a lot of different IPs that are generated, but we track the allocation of the network. So this is the most important part. So we know that everything what came there, starting with this A, with the D, that was uh, this customer. Okay? And we also store it in the log. So we know who we're connecting where uh, because we know the network that was assigned for this customer. Okay, this network, so it means it's a bit different concept that we uh, used to work with IPv4. In IPv4, it's always we receive the IP address on the CP VAN interface, and then we use this IP address to access to the internet. Usually we have NAT, so all customers are, uh, they have private range, and then we are netting. Or we are routing some network to this CP, and then customers have public IP. Okay, but we always assign IP to uh, CPE. Here the concept is a bit different. We assign not this, the IP to the CPE, but we assign the pool. It's called delegated IPv6 pool. And this delegated IPv6 pool we assign to the customer here. So here you can see uh, there is an option to assign this pool in the delegated IPv6 network. So we can assign it here. And then when customer connects, he get the IP from this pool. Unfortunately, in Mikrotik, it's not that simple. And in Mikrotik, I cannot assign in Splinks or in any radio software, I cannot say customer should use this IPv6 pool. Okay, Mikrotik doesn't support. There is a bug in their implementation of radios IPv6 PPPoE. Their bug is described very well on their uh, website, on their forum, and I have created uh, one uh, petition so everyone who is now in the webinar I really appreciate if you will support this to uh, push Mikrotik to make it work correctly so for in Splinks we have everything done so it means in Splinks I can define delegated IPv6 network uh, I can even assign the IP to the interface when if I want which is not used that much this is the most important part but if I assign it and when customer connects and radius answers back with this network, Mikrotik doesn't assign this IP network physically to the CPE. So it just doesn't work, okay? This is the main obstacle why any other radio software cannot work with uh, Mikrotik correctly. What we did, we did it in a bit different way. We say, okay, we will not assign IP from Splinks. We will let Mikrotik assign these pools, but Mikrotik doesn't track it anywhere, okay? But what we did is when Mikrotik assigns this pool, as you can see here, it assigned this pool or it assigned that pool to the customer. When Mikrotik sends us accounting information to Radius, we grab the pool from this accounting packet and we assign it to the customer. Say, this is the IP that customer is using. And we then log it and then we grab uh, store this information. So then if the police will come and say who was using this IP a few days ago, you can find it in, in Splinks. Okay, so it's not definition, Splinks is not able to define. Even if you set up the pool here in the settings of service, Mikrotik will simply ignore it. Okay, Mikrotik will not use this pool. It will use its own pool that is configured that we can configure in the pools for PPPoE, IPv6 there. Okay, and what I said, there is a if I open the change.org, there is a link that I will send now to chat. Yeah, Francesco is asking, what is the difference between IPv6 network and delegated? The network actually should set up, if I'm not mistaken, it should set up the IPv6 on the band interface and the delegated uh, puts it to the IP delegated IPv6, but Mikrotik doesn't work both of options. No, there is no option. First of all, in, in, uh, if we work in Cisco, I think there is like, I can define IPv6 uh, network to the VAN and then to the WAN. I think Mikrotik, there is no option at all to define anything to WAN, or at least I haven't find it, found it. We can assign uh, to the WAN, the delegated IPv6, 
But as I told you, and this is what I'm explaining, that it doesn't work 100% correctly, or it doesn't work at all with the assignment from radius to microtic. This is what doesn't work. Yeah. So at least with DHCP running on the PPPoE, it used to work with a framed IPv6 delegated prefix. Yeah, but it's a problem on NAS or on PPPoE client. This is the problem on, on uh, NAS, microtic NAS. Microtic NAS doesn't support it correctly. So look at that. This is the petition that I would like you guys to sign if you can. Uh, reasons for signing. There is Om Omit wrote the topic on Microtic. So we can copy and paste the topic on Microtic and you will see that this topic is, is there for four years, I think. Okay, so you can see this topic was started 2014 and if we scroll down up to there yeah I was updating it 18th of February but all other guys were writing January 2020 no real solution for for that I mean for the assignment you know the problem what each other uh, like a free radius and uh, other platforms they have because they cannot le learn in the way how we did it that this is the IP of uh, end user and we learn it and we store it in the statistics and we show it everywhere and we, we use uh, the uh, IP address management for manage these IPs and, and, and networks because free radius doesn't have this option. So in free radius, you need to define the IP to the customer to understand that this customer went online. So and if it doesn't work and Microtic doesn't accept this IP, so the free radius thinks that customer is not connected, that he doesn't have, that he haven't received IPv6 at all. And uh, yeah, this is not working solution. So we did this change. Now we can deploy it. I'm not super happy with that because I want to control it from Splinks as well. You know, I know I want to choose and say, this is the IPv6 on the band interface. This is the IPv6 for delegated IPv6 prefix. This is what I want to say in Splinks and that will be pushed to the NAS and NAS will apply for a customer. Now I cannot do it. Now I have to configure it in NAS, NAS assigns it and I just got the information and propagate it and show it in Splinks and store it in Splinks, okay? Not ideal situation that I'm not, I don't like it like personally, but, uh, but it is a working situation. So at least we can start working and playing with this IPv6, okay? Because all my clients that I have, nobody uses IPv6 and there are no IPv4 anymore at all. So there are no IPv4, you can buy IPv4 for $20 for one IP at the moment in the market. And if you know better prices, let me know. <laughs> I will buy it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's, that's the story with IPv6. Yes, uh, the questions, let's go back to the questions. As, as, I, as I said, I will have a more documentation and uh, tutorials how to set up IPv6, like let's say three steps where I will describe how to configure a CPE device, how to configure NAS, how to configure radios together, and how to make it work. Because, because we made it work. We configured completely IPv6, we connected five, customers and these five customers are working now on IPv6 and this company is going to deploy it further just uh, they need more time to to connecting this uh, this class because you need the disadvantage you know of IPv6 is that you need to log into CP of customer and you need to enable IPv6 because by default it's not enabled other disadvantage is that some of the CPs are outdated and you need to create uh, to up the upgrade it to the newest uh, file uh, to the newest version of the operating system because it doesn't support IPv6 so this is tedious work that you have to do so that's why okay if I want to enable IPv6 to 100 clients I need to update all their IPv6 uh, update their uh, systems of the routers to IPv6 support if you know that Microtic doesn't have IPv6 enabled by default you need to install the package uh, Activate it, restart the router, then it will connect, you need to configure it, and then it will grab the IPv6. Yes, Microtic CP IPv6 have separate firewall and separate routing table. This is correct. Heiko is asking about news about TR69. Heiko, I already mentioned it 20 minutes ago, and Debian 10 PHCP. PHP 7 support. Debian 10, I'm not sure we are fighting with Ubuntu 18. 
right now and Ubuntu 20, so we are fighting with that. Uh, Ubiquiti CPE support is currently not yet in the development task list because we are now working only on the TR69 management. That will be supporting all equipment that have this protocol. So we will not have direct Ubiquiti CPE support now uh, connecting through SNMP or connecting through API or anyhow. But uh, we'll be able to manage everything through TR69. So TR69 is our uh, goal for the next three months to make it work. Actually, we will use Genius as ACS, but we will uh, create a UX for that. So the windows or the elements of uh, management and connect it with, uh, with the Genie ACS. But the Genie ACS by itself, it's quite use useless. It has not that much things that can be used. So we have to write a lot of things ourselves. Um, okay, I'm going through the questions. Yeah, I think the last, the last slide was exactly about that. What is the plan for here it is. What is the plan for uh, 3.1? Okay, this is the, regarding support. I already mentioned several times that we provide 24-7, but uh, here is the ACS with TR69. So this is where we are focusing. And the second thing that we're, we are focusing is the VoIP and email and tuning of the CRM, okay? As you saw now, I tried to change something in the CRM and it gave me some small error. So these things we will be still fixing there. Not sure why it appeared. But uh, we'll be adding this email and VoIP CRM, CRM features. And networking improvements, uh, I will define, we will be defining what else we'll be pushing together with ACS. Because some people are asking us for a long time for networks, uh, netfall support to uh, be able to not count traffic to certain destinations, okay, like YouTube and stuff like that. Probably this will touch. I'm not sure we will be preparing the plan for 3.1. The plan for development is already for ACS and is already for email and VoIP CRM support. So these two things, uh, engineers and developers already start already started to work in. Okay, they are going to work, and in three months there will be first uh, versions of these features. So that's regarding the plan. So let me check. A few more questions. We still have eight minutes because I plan this webinar to be for two hours and it's already almost two hours. Um, from chat, I'm checking uh, the questions now. Uh, is it possible to modify the splings to deduct user credits immediately after adding service or changing package then waiting rather until midnight? Yes, it is possible. There is a button to charge. Uh, Muhammad, uh, I recommend you to, if you are now considering the configuration of splings, uh, to have a call directly with, with uh, one of our support guys. And just to go to answer your particular questions because some of the countries, they have own requirements. For example, as I'm saying, I have customers in Libya and we were connecting with these companies, completely different scenario of billing that is used in South Africa, for example, or in England, okay? So in England, South Africa, we use pre, uh, recurring uh, billing engine with a blocking of customer if he's not paying us for two weeks. In Libya, I have four or five clients, I think, and they all were setting the prepaid on the option so the customer must prepay and when he prepays immediately we need to get his uh, uh, balance off so this like pay and go scenario seven days 30 days this everything what we did i will not explain it now because it's a long explanation but uh, i recommend just to book a call with one of our sport en engineers who will explain it or with me or i will explain it directly um, Christops, can I help with the field testing of TR69? Yes, please. I really appreciate your help, Christops. If you will help us with that, you can connect with Ruslan. He's working on that. So chief of developer, developers, Christops, you know him. You have his contact in Skype. You can connect directly and uh, you will be first who will work with that stuff. Why not? 
Yeah, I would like to get more details about how support and tickets are being managed in Springs, Alan. Uh, also, I, what, what we do, you know, our business, we have many support uh, guys. We do one-to-one -one calls. So please make a call with us, schedule a call, send us the ticket to support. We will schedule a call and we'll show you how these tickets are working because there is no enough time in this webinar. I don't want to waste uh, time of 70 or 80 people here just to showing the things that they already know because some of uh, our customers are already using these tickets for half a year, for example, okay? But in this, in this call, we can uh, show you exactly the steps one by one, ask for all your questions. Mm, for discount on service, can you add option to amount instead of percentage? Not yet, unfortunately. We will be playing more with that as well. Also, that what I want to add in the next 3.1 version, but I need to discuss it with the product department, is uh, agents and uh, distributors. So this is something that is very basic and split for four years already. Okay, so this is the thing that I want to push forward. There is a task, a description, everything that I created almost half a year ago, but uh, we, despite we have uh, 16 developers, there's still a lot of work. So some of the tasks are not, we, we were not able to do in this time frame. Um, Radim, is, Radim is asking us if he can get a Splinks testing license for two months. And no, we don't play the game with the two months trial licenses. We give the license maximum for two weeks. Uh, then you can buy the small subscription for 100 subscribers and uh, work with that because we believe that two weeks is enough to understand if the platform will fit or not. Because this all trial licenses for two months and three months, uh, this simply just is wasting of our time and time of the customer. So we, our corporate policy is to not give long trials. So we give one week, two weeks maximum of the trial. And then if customers already see that really that will work and 90%, 80% that it will work. So you can buy the minimal license. If you have 1000 subscribers, you don't have to buy 1000 subscribers license. You can buy the 200 subscriber license, which is the minimal one and work with that for one, two, three months. Do you have workflow for ticket assignments? Uh, no, actually we do not have the workflow. We have automatic assignment to the team based on the email where uh, the ticket comes or we have uh, automatic assignment to the person. But the workflow of ticket, there is no workflow of ticket, I think. There's just a ticket and it's communication between customer and us. If we need to have a task on it, we create a task for that. Uh, regarding the hotspot licensing, Heiko, we are aware that online vouchers are counted into an active license, how they are daily average, weekly, I think daily average this. I think, but uh, better is to ask Ruslan because he was doing that. So Heiko, you can write this question directly to him. I think it's daily. Mm. Yeah, Mohammed is writing, I would splinks to block customers immediately when they finish their cap better than creating script to reset PPP session from my site. Splinks does it. Okay, if you use cap, we have uh, COA support of radius. If you use API, we can block it on API on Micratic level. We can kick out the session so Splinks does it. So if the customer is uh, reaching the cap, Splinks knows that he is reaching the cap and it does the kicking out customer, reconnecting, blocking, blocking him, all the things that Splinks does automatically on the radius level, if it's a radius. If it's a Mikrotik API, also it does it on the Mikrotik API. Okay, so this is done. Uh, Rayesh is asking, can we create service where the invoice is generated at the end of months, end of quarter, so for example, we have customer who is on the 1st of January, service start date, 
but the invoice needs to be generated 30th of March. Not. <laughs> I think you can create it for the first time because we have a post paid, but I think the post paid is created only for one month. Like for example, you can create 1st of uh, February, you can create invoice for January, but uh, then 1st of March, it will create an invoice for, uh, for February. Yeah. The prepay, yeah, the prepay to three months it is, but I think Christophe's, uh, Rayesh is asking a different thing. He's asking for postpay for three months. So the prepay for three months or for half a year is possible, but postpay for half a year, yeah, I think not. No, never, never met this requirement. Can we personalize the customer portal, uh, put the logo, theme? Yes, you can do that. Some of our clients, oh, everyone push, uh, has his own logo, but even some guys, uh, they put their own colors on the, on the portal uh, because it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, we will be, ah, we, will, we are working on a new portal design for customers that will be much uh, cleaner and it will not be the same as the Splings. So that will be part of 3.1. And also 30.1 will be uh, improvements in configuration because configuration, I don't like the icons and so this mess that we have now. Is there a migration guide from Splings 2 to Splings 3? Uh, we are going to migrate all customers. I think 150 customers of Splings are already on 3.0 and uh, it's around 250 customers who will be migrated during this week, next week, till the end of March, we will do it. Uh, when the three one will be very difficult to say we look we always uh, have a three months period to launch the first alpha we launch the first alpha that some customers are already using so for example 3.0 some of our clients who are uh, who are not afraid <laughs> let's say not afraid right? who need really a lot of new features immediately uh, so they were using 3.0 for three months already and now we launched it after fixing all the bugs, fixing all the things, and st some bugs still can appear and we'll fix them during this time. But, uh, so in three months, we will launch like a first alpha version. Then it can take another three months to fix all the bugs and uh, get uh, everything working on 100%. It's still like software development has a lot of uh, own disadvantages, like the, the bugs are, you cannot avoid it. Even we have very, very good developers, I think, but still a lot of things we need to then fix, find it. And uh, yeah, it can take half a year. Uh, usually I think it is half a year or the release of Splinks is every half a year. But as I'm saying, the customers of Splinks who are paying us already, some of them, they can use 3.1. So Christops is asking us to work with the TR69. I'm pretty sure that in two, three months, he'll get a TR69 and 3.1 already, and he'll be one of the first customers using that. Can we add own field to the sign up widget for the website? I think this we need to address to developers to the, config, to the father configuration because now I haven't seen it. I saw only the fields that are preset by us. I think it's possible to add as well. Uh, how do I upgrade to 3.0 version? I have been testing for months. Uh, just send us the support ticket saying I want to upgrade to the production and we will do it for you. Yeah, this was the questions from chat and now I have 31 questions and answers here that you do not see. Okay, will Splings be integrated with Office 365 for calendars? It will not be integrating now. We are launching 3.0 and the scheduling now and we will try to gather, uh, so answer life. This is, I'll try to. Yeah, you would like to answer on this question. Yeah, what I would like to say that uh, Office 365 maybe will integrate it in the next step, but I need to get the uh, all the feedbacks from clients. So if they think that the 
software is not well designed and there are some gaps and we need to fix it, we need to change it, we need to add something. For example, signing of document is not in the app. I know about that, but maybe there will be other things and our, our customers. So what, what I would like to ask you is to start using the scheduling task management and write me all the feedbacks that you have. It is slow, it's not working here, it's not answering, it's not uh, whatever, whatever. I don't like it, whatever. Because this is based on that, we can then sit together with how we did it with tickets. Now we sit and we analyze and then we improve it. Okay? So, but uh, the Office 365, maybe it will be at, maybe it will be added in the next version, but we'll see. We will see what will be the requirements. Any plans to port Splinks on FreeBSD? No, there is no plans for FreeBSD. There is no plans for other uh, Linuxes. As I'm saying, we have Ubuntu that we are fighting very, very right now, like three weeks already, to port it to the latest Ubuntu uh, with Debian. Yeah, it's very, it's very, a lot of work for that. For There are hundreds of the dependencies to make a packaging. So that's why we will continue working with Debian Ubuntu. Maybe we'll choose just one of these platforms, but not others. Uh, okay, the other questions from the, from the question and answer. Uh, hi, yeah, hi Alex, is Splinks running on Ubuntu 18? It's not running there yet. Uh, three weeks already spent on this uh, support but not still still not working and does the scheduling management work with api uh, we are planning to have this option to be able to give customers option to schedule the meeting or schedule schedule the work with us uh it's not yet what is the recommended distribution on the moment is ubuntu 16 as always ubuntu 16.04 lts i think it's three so this one is uh what is 100 percent working very well yeah there another dan was asking here about recurring billing and understand Moneris. And I already answered that we have Moneris integration and you can use it. Okay, give me a few seconds. I'll read more questions there. I see almost all the questions were already in chat. And then, then is uh, the new in Splinks. I see the question is, can we add our own fields in the program or ask you to add it? You can add it. The Splinks has a concept of additional fields. You can add as many additional fields in any part of the system as you want. In the customers and the tickets, whatever. So you can add the field. You can define what type of field is it. So that can be, for example, uh, dates. It can be just a text or it can be a select box. So you just define it and you use these additional fields. Do you encourage the users of Splinks to provide the feedback on problems we encounter? Yes, I do. Uh, usually it's everything goes through our support. So the people, if they have any problems, they just write us on the support and we are trying to fix it. Uh, depends if it's a major issue, then we fix it in almost immediately. If it's a feature, it's a, like a feature missing something, then we put it to the development plan. If it's a just a, a, like a requirement, but it's not supported by the community, then we do not implement it.
do you use Team Viewer or something to remote to our computers to troubleshooting? Yeah, we do always uh, AnyDesk connections software for remote uh, support of our customers. There is another question. It will be there integration with auto calendars. Also the question, maybe yes, if we'll see that scheduling is used a lot and the people are requiring that, we'll add Office, uh, we'll add uh, auto, all this stuff. For, for now we added uh, just Google because it was the easiest one and uh, uh, many people use it. Okay, so that's why we have added Google just for let's say first testing and first trying and then we will see uh, we'll check the feedbacks. Yeah, Ali is was asking about the workflow, and also he is asking about um, mobile app for technical support. Now we are not planning the mobile app for technical support. We work in the technical support inside Splings from the. From the, from the laptop, from the computer. The mobile apps that we have is that just for client access and for scheduling. We do not plan other mobile apps at the moment. We are planning to improve these existing mobile apps. As you saw when I was showing that picture was not uh, uploading when it was uploaded 50 times before. Now something happened, so this stuff we need to, to, need to improve and continuously fix. Future support of OLT other than Huawei? Not yet. Again, the whole uh, logic, the whole structure of product deployment, the development is based on the requirements that we have. So we have many requirements for OLT Huawei from customers from Spain, and that's why we have added it there. When we added it there from uh, 40 requirement companies requiring it, only five were using it. Okay, so that's always question of uh, really that makes sense for us and then really makes sense for, for a community. So for OLT, I, we have customers using fiber, yes, many of them, but uh, I don't know why, but there is like TR69 or something was everyone is pushing for two years almost already, yes. But uh, OLT, Huawei, uh, Spanish guys were pushing the hard, okay, other vendors, one, two requests I had in a few years. Like Zixel and Galix and whatever. And that's all what, the, what, what people were requesting uh, about the oil team. Yeah, thank you so much. The live bandwidth monitor is a great feature. Yes, there is a live bandwidth monitor that can show you uh, throughput of the customer at the moment and also it's available on the client portal so this is the new feature in 3.0 that we have added Dritan, hi Dritan, good that you are here uh, we are ready to test ipv6 Dritan is writing us and we have full mirkletic network i know your network i was assisting you in the past, what will be the procedure? Will you assist us? Yes, we can uh, have a call with your engineer. And, and uh, as I'm saying, I will create the de deployment guide how to deploy IPv6. I'll send it to you first. Your engineer will go through this uh, deployment guide. Maybe it will be enough. It's not that difficult. You know, IPv6 is just the IP protocol. Uh, it has a bit of different uh, network allocation uh, mechanism and network networking in general but uh, the concept of work is more or less same so we just have customer getting ip and getting route and it works i will uh, have a, i will make this deployment guide i hope to make it during the next week and send it to all customers and publish it on online and uh, you can go through this guide and if uh, assistance will be needed yes i will be able to assist i think ipv6 is very nice for promotion for marketing showing that you are much better than competitors okay nobody has ipv6 in in spain and this fetal network is the first company who is going to deploy it i think all big players they don't have ipv6 it's like penetration of ipv6 is very low here and uh, dritan you can become first in albania with ipv6 support
uh, yeah, Elvin, does does the free one will have ubiquity PPPoE bandwidth management? What do you mean by bandwidth management on ubiquity? We do the bandwidth management on uh, the NAS router always. So this is what we have. So the MicroT creates the queues on the PPPoE router. E ubiquity, if we are talking about ubiquity, edge router, I think we also can create some speed limitation on it, but I'm not a big fan of this platform. Um, I don't understand exactly how it should work. Regarding ubiquity, as I'm saying, we are planning only to track and control it through TR69 right now. Maybe, as I'm saying, we'll have another meeting with my support department, with my engineer, engineers and developers. We'll discuss how we can improve, uh, how we can improve our networking part. And uh, yeah, ubiquity, some CP, ubiquity management was already like a lot of uh, questions about that. I, I, I'm not a big fan of that because uh, you know ubiquity has a lot of tools that they provide their, their own free tools. So I'm not sure if we need to copy uh, their uh, their tools and put it to Splinks. So at least for now, as I'm saying, TR69 should cover a lot of things, but uh, yeah, we will see. Not nothing plans more with ubiquity. Um, Uh, Amado is writing, is it possible to schedule one-time service to be added automatically when the invoice is generated instead of editing the invoice once it is created? Uh, you can create it as a transaction, I think. So if you go to here to the customer and for example, if you create the transaction and say, for example, customer doesn't have anything. And you say, this is my installation. And you set up 50, for example. And then you say, add to invoice. When you create this, then it will be added automatically to the next invoice to customer, even without. So you, you can just, when you create a customer, you can create this transaction. And when invoice will be generated, he will get this transaction on invoice. So if I create here, charge an invoice, I think, yeah, 1st of April, this is, I think we already charged. Yeah, I think this one, so if I go there, charge an invoice, it should appear in the invoice, uh, should appear this transaction here, I think. Yeah, here it is, you see installation is there. So this is the way how it can be done. Um, not 100% automatically, uh maybe using the webhook we can create it automatically so if if you want for every customer to create one time service when he is created maybe we can create a webhook that will say okay when customer is added we need to create a one time service okay so maybe this way but the, the logic is add a transaction and this transaction will appear in the next invoice Uh, Bruno is asking, in terms of the router to be used, we have Cisco, the IS-15.1 version. At first, there is no incom incompatibility. Yes, uh, we support Cisco, Cisco IS-XR, uh, Cisco IS-XE, and uh, I have, uh, on the website, we have documentation about this, uh, how to configure it for, I think, PPPoE is there. Not sure about uh, the DHCP configuration we described, but PPP we definitely yes, with the different Cisco routers. If you need assistance, so again, just ping on support and we'll check if we have documentation. Yeah, I think I have answered almost all questions already and we, we are connected for two hours and a half. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for attendance. Uh, I really appreciate that so many people came today. And uh, yeah, let's go forward. Let's go to 3.0 version. Let's, uh, I hope that it should work already. There are no bugs 
testing it for three months already. So, but if we will see, you'll find anything just as soon as you got it, write me the feedback, write us support. Thank you for your time and have a nice end of day.